okay, I got these tacked in here, but I haven't made sure they're squared up yet. So the first thing you want to do, we'll go ahead and we'll get these two here first. You want to make sure that you still got your, your starting point, your zero. So we take our center head again, get that set at zero, and turn it where we need it, right about there. For all intensive purposes, we're close enough. Okay, then we'll take our little square. Now we don't want to move that, you want to be careful. So we'll make sure we're good there. We've got to come in, tap it around a little bit. Do the same over here. Then you want to take your straight edge, just double check. Okay. This is here again. Then come back and tack it. Now this time you want to have a pretty good size tack on it. In this side. I'll come back and do this one. Now I got a couple little gaps here I gotta fill. So you make sure you do that before you start really welding it up because the heat will draw and you'll get the it'll suck in on you and you don't want that right about like that like that okay that on that's pretty close hopefully your cut will be a little straighter than mine <laughs> and tack this up After you get these tacked, you want to go ahead and just double check everything underneath here, make sure we're all nice and flush. You'll end up cleaning it up anyway. And so we'll go ahead and get our first root passes here, but you don't want to just completely do one and completely do one and completely do one because that heat will suck that, that uh, pipe in and you'll get some warpage. That's why I just fused this right now because when I go to weld this, I'll do a couple inches, then I'll jump around, and you jump around, and it keeps the heat fairly uniform. You know, nothing's gonna be perfect, but it's just, you keep the heat down as much as you can. So let's go ahead and get ready to, and we'll weld this up. Okay, now we're getting ready to weld these up. Now there's a couple of gaps here. I wanna do those first. That way I clean them and I come back over and the beetle looks semi-smooth. I'm not the best welder in the world, but I, I know the procedures of it. And so we're going to go ahead and just start running our beads and you find the worst spot. And then just add the rod, add the rod. Don't be scared of it. If you blow through a little bit, that's okay. You know, if you're welding at this point of a uh, skill, you should know how to handle it. Just add it and add it. Watch that heat. That's not too bad. We got a little discoloration, but it will come back on it. Now I'll do the same thing 
with the other other ones over here this one here and uh, that way if we jump around it keeps that heat down Okay, I cleaned up too for that other port. Now what we'll do, I'll weld it, the rest of it up and then we'll come back to our scene. Okay, so now we're welding it up. We're getting all the, the small spots that are open up out of the way. And it should run smooth. Make sure your hands are comfortable. If you got to rest them on the work, go ahead. Watch out you don't burn your hand. Just come around each port. Jump around from one port to the next. Just reduces the heat on average. That's a big thing. Even though this material might look thick, it's not really thick at all. And just watch your cup, watch your tungsten. Don't be worried about if it's a little sloppy. As long as it works and it doesn't leak, that's the main thing. You can always come back and clean it up later. And just come around the ports. No squeaking. Okay. Now I'm adding the rod to get the final pass on the center of the pipe. Just take my time going around. If I go downhill a little bit, that's okay, but you don't want to go too far. It's always better to have it on the top. About 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Just about any kind of orbital weld. Then when you come around the other side, you got to blend it in when you come up to the port. Remember to add that rod so you get a good hump on that bead doesn't have to look pretty, it needs to look uniform. Keep Watch your heat. Don't go down too far. Now I'm coming around by the port on the top. And you want to stay up on the top as much as you can. But when you roll it, and if the port is hitting the table or something and your hand's not comfortable, just go ahead and stop. Wire brush it and start again. It's running nice and clean. Then across the top here again. And I'm only going about two inches at a time. And then come into the port. Now this is where you have to blend the two beads together. It's like a double fillet weld. Be careful, you can get a leak there too. Watch your pinholes. Almost got it. See, we got it all welded up now. We'll take the wire wheel to it or wire brush. We'll get the discoloration off. Coming around that port was a little tricky, so you got to watch that. Okay, well, we got it welded up now. You can see the color is good. Still a little warm. Nice and even across here. Around the, our port. All through here, all nice and even. Then I'll take a little wire brush, clean that all up to get all that color off the each side of the weld. Other end over here, same way. Clean all that up, get all that color. You want that blue and gold color there. You don't want any dark black. That, that's when there's too much heat. Nice and clean like that. Okay, let me clean that up and I'll show you the finished piece. There it is, all buffed out, ready to go. Found out how to locate your ports, and then uh, made sure all the seals are nice and tight. And your center seam here, you want to have it built up. You don't want it concaved. And uh, the next thing you would do would be putting flanges on top, or hose fittings, or just about anything. I got to think what I want to do with it. 
anyway there you go there's stainless steel pipe and uh, I'm Rob and I'll see you on longevity learning lab next time